वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया so hari krishna dear viewers uh, after some time uh, we are gathering again and it was rather asked me on saturday so we thought we would uh, uh, try to understand uh, or try to talk a little bit about shrimati radharani it's very difficult to understand radharani uh, so we won't try to understand her but uh, we can try to um read a little bit about her and uh, get some gyan knowledge about this incredible personality so this is a verse from brahma samhita 5.1 ishvara brahma krishna satyam vigrana hagirade govind sarva karanam krishna is known as govind uh, is a supreme god he has eternal blissful spiritual body he is origin of all he has no other origin he is the prime cause of all causes so often situated next to krishna is another divine personality so who is she who is that girl next to krishna when you see a picture of krishna people wonder who is that girl next to krishna well this is radha before we can understand the girl no ordinary girl of course we have to try to understand krishna when we speak of krishna we speak of the supreme lord supreme personality of god the cause of all causes just like that verse described in other words when we speak of krishna we speak of god usually when people think of god they think of an old man because god is known as the one who is the most ancient he is the original person he is the original purush so he must be an old man with a beard white beard for example michelangelo painted god on the ceiling of a vatican or of the vatican as an old man with a white beard thinking if you're old then you have a white beard so this is uh, due to the materialistic idea that people have that god has a material body like ours so if he's old he must have a white beard a common misconception But in the Vedas, we find information about God that makes it very clear that although God is the oldest, His form is not old; He is ever fresh. His form is completely spiritual. It is said that He is just like a sixteen-year-old boy, eternally. Although not seeable by these eyes, in fact, God is a person with a spiritual form. Many people like to think of God as void of personality, and therefore. void of form void of gender in that sense but in fact krishna is purush main or the enjoyer purush actually means enjoyer and prakriti which is the opposite of purush it means enjoyed and we are prakriti with to be enjoyed by krishna but when when we are enjoyed by krishna actually we enjoy more than krishna this is the irony of uh the supreme he makes us enjoy more than he enjoys this is the inconceivable nature of god he's not a a cruel person he's a very loving person and loving means reciprocation not it's not a one way street isn't that we just serve the lord and he enjoys no actually through that service we enjoy even more than god does the evidence in the vedas is that the supreme person exists in his kingdom but he does not exist alone there the idea that in the kingdom of god god is sitting there very lonely on the throne growing old alone is again a mistake due to the insufficient information people have received in fact god is not only the most attractive and ever fresh youthful person but god does not exist alone there is a person who is closest to krishna the supreme person whose love for the lord is greater than the love of anyone else for the supreme lord and that person is radha Radha is not separate from Krishna. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, we find the statement that Shrimati Radharani is the embodiment of Mahabhav, 
and the crest jewel amongst all lovely consorts of Lord Krishna. But her position is actually very unique. Krishna is one, but he appears as two, so that there can be dynamic exchange of love. How much love are you going to have with yourself? Right? It's very limited. But when there's two or more, there can be a dynamic exchange of love. In Krishna and Radharani are the male and female aspects of the Supreme Being appearing together. So it isn't necessarily that Radha is goddess. No, she's part of the Supreme Personality of God. So there's Krishna and there's Radharani. There's the male aspect and there's the female aspect of that same one God. It is difficult to comprehend the relationship that Krishna and Radharani have through mental speculation, as Krishna is the very source of the mind and cannot be understood with, with our limited human intellect. If Radharani is both one and different, both one bit and different from Krishna, one may ask, can two people be one and one be two? <laughs> Interesting question. The combination is that like a, that of a sun and sunshine. So this is the explanation. There is no sunshine without the sun. And the sun cannot exist without the sunshine. If there was a sun and there's no sunshine, is there any meaning to that sun? No. But without the sun, there wouldn't be any sunshine. The energy, sunshine, and the energetic sun are one. While also being different. Similarly, rather in Krishna, simultaneously one and different. Krishna is like the sun, and Radha is the sunshine. Krishna is the energetic, and sunshine is, Radha is the energy. Krishna is the supreme personality of God. While Srimati Radharani is his supreme pers pleasure energy. As one, they constitute the absolute truth. In his commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Prabhupada notes that the relationship of Krishna and Radharani is not a romantic dealing between two mortal human beings. We shouldn't think that Radha and Krishna are having a love affair, just like an ordinary love affair in this world. It is purely transcendental and requires spiritual qualification to understand. Prina Prabhupada recommends that an aspiring devotee of Krishna should first thoroughly study the initial nine cantos of the Bhagavatam, all of which stress upon the greatness of God and his divine energy, before dwelling into the intimate pastimes detailed in the tenth canto. Radharani makes her prominent presence felt in the Hare Krishna mantra. Hara is the female form of Hari or Krishna. And Hare is the vocative form of Hara. So when we say Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, it's actually Hara. But when you sing it, when you speak it, when you chant it, it comes out as Hare, one and the same. Hare Hara. Radharani is highly compassionate. And for this reason, her name appears before that of Krishna as devotees approach her before approaching Krishna. Although Krishna is so beautiful, that he can attract millions of cupids and is therefore called Madan Mohan, the attractor of Cupid. Radharani can attract even Krishna. She is therefore called Madan Mohan, Mohini, the attractor of the attractor of Cupid. So we know Krishna is very attractive and he attracts the whole world. But he is also himself attracted by Radha. So we can see the beauty of Radha is greater than even of Krishna. The word Radha comes from the Sanskrit word Aradhana, which means worship. And the word Rani means queen. Radharani can literally be translated as the queen of worship. In some texts, she is described as a supreme goddess who is worshipable by everyone. She is a protector of all, mother of the entire universe. The question is, is God a man? The answer to the question that has been on everybody's mind for millennia is yes and no. God is not just made according to some Vedic scriptures. God has both masculine and feminine expansions. So the masculine is Krishna, the feminine is Radha. 
in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna provides a sneak preview into these feminine traits. He says, Krita Shri Raksha Narinam Shmitam Medadatak Shama. So these are the qualities of women. Among women, I am fame, fortune, fine speech, memory, intelligence, steadfastness, and patience. However, in some of the more esoteric texts, such as the Puranas, Upanishads, Chaitanya Charitamrita, it explains that the complete manifestation of God includes his female counterpart, part, Radha. So God means Radha Krishna, not just Krishna. If we want the complete idea of the absolute truth, it's Radha Krishna. They are inconceivably one and different as Krishna expands himself into two for the purpose of exchanging love. There's a descript beautiful description in the Chaitanya Charitamrita which gives us a window into the connection between Radha and Krishna. Radha is the full power. Krishna is possessor of the full power. The two are not different, as evidenced by the revealed scriptures. They are indeed the same, just as musk and its scent are inseparable, or as fire and its heat are non-different. The Suratha and Krishna are one, yet they have taken two forms to enjoy the mellows of pastimes. This concept is not an easy one to grasp. If God is full and complete, why does he need to expand himself to exchange love? Good question. The next question we can ask is, why does God need to do anything anyway? Well, God has a personality. It indicates that he has preferences. This need to expand for the pur purpose of exchanging love speaks of the importance love plays in the lives of all individuals, not just in this world, but in the spiritual world as well. Our desire to love and be loved comes from God. For the most part, no one wants to be alone, at least not permanently. The thing everyone is chasing after is love. We all want to know that there are people out there that love us. Simultaneously, we hanker to be able to give our love to others. Yeah, without love, how can you live? How can you live with hatred all the time? Yeah, asking for an early death. There is another passage in the Chaitanya Charitam that describes Radha's qualities and love for Krishna. Radharani's body, mind and words are steeped in love for Krishna. The body of Radharani is a veritable transformation of love of Godhead. Even Krishna cannot understand the strength of Radha's love, which overwhelms him. Her transcendental body is complete with unparalleled spiritual qualities. Even Lord Krishna himself can't reach the limit of the transcendental qualities of Radha Rani. This shows the incredible quality and um, aspect of the female part of God. Even the male part cannot understand. She has unlimited qualities. So let's just go through these and then we can stop. She's sweetness personified. Says There's 25 prominent qualities. She's ever fresh young girl. 14 years, 6 months I think. That's her age. Eternally. Her eyes are always moving. She's always brightly smiling. She possesses all auspicious marks on her body. She can agitate Krishna by the flavor of her person. She is expert in singing, the art of singing. She can speak very nicely and sweetly. She is expert in presenting feminine attractions. She is modest and gentle. She is always very merciful. She is transcendentally cunning. <laughs> She knows how to dress nicely. She's always shy, always respectful, always patient, very grave. She's enjoyed by Krishna. She's situated on the highest devotional platform. She's the abode of love of the residents of Gokul. She can give shelter to all kinds of devotees. She's always affectionate to superiors and inferiors. She's always obliged by the dealings of her associates. 
she's the greatest among Krishna's girlfriends. So we need to understand that a little better when it says Krishna's girlfriends. Everything belongs to Krishna. Sometimes people say, oh, Krishna wasn't very moral. He had so many girlfriends, so many wives. Ram was a very um, moral. He had moral character, one wife. And they try to perhaps put down Sri Krishna. But actually Krishna is the highest supreme, highest Godhead. He doesn't care for anybody's opinions. He simply wants to please the devotees. So if a devotee wants to be close to him in conjugal love, Krishna will fulfill that desire without worrying about what people think. So everything belongs to Krishna. Everything is Krishna's. Everything is enjoyed by Krishna. So just because he may have, on, it may appear he has loose morals, so many girlfriends, well, everything's his anyway. So what's your problem? <laughs> it doesn't belong to you. You are, We are thinking this belongs to me. This is my wife, my friends, my house, my car. Nothing actually belongs to us. We are thieves. <laughs> it actually all belongs to Krishna anyway. And we, we are simply caretakers in this world, looking after those possessions for him to enjoy. So, who's the thief? Who's the immoral person? Are we or is Krishna? So anyway, I wanted to end there. Uh, we'll talk further about... Oh, sorry, there's another one. I thought you said 25. Anyway. She always keeps Krishna under her control. Final one there. So maybe uh, the numbering was a little odd. Hang on a sec. 12. Ah, that's right. It's actually 20. It is 25. I missed out 13 here. So Hare Krishna, I wanted to stop there. We can continue tomorrow talking about Radharani and her glories. And tomorrow we can talk about the embodiment of her love for Krishna. So... Anybody, any questions, any comments? I want to say welcome back. Ah, thank you, Baba Ben. Thank you Hope so much. Hope you had a nice uh, Jatra. Yes, it was phenomenal. <laughs> and um, weather-wise was good? Yes, yes. Uh, sometimes it would rain, but not often. And when it rained, actually, it cooled the place down. So it was very yeah. good. It was very good. Yeah, thanks for sharing all lovely darsans <laughs> and riverside darsan and temple yeah. darsan. Felt like that we were with you. That was the idea. Yeah. <laughs> that was, yeah. I mean, it was so grateful that you send even half minute, one minute, half minute, little, little mm -hmm. videos, which uh, I was watching all the time and I said, oh my God. <laughs> Whatever we were talking in our kathas before, mm. Mm. Uh, and all those places you visited, which was really nice. I mean, I haven't got words for that, mm -hmm. but it was good. Yeah, no, thank, thank you. you. And I'm glad you are back uh, yeah. safely and sound. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. Um, today's you. katha is good uh, about Radharani. Yeah. It was nice the way you are telling us. I mean, you are right that uh, she is dressed up nice and <laughs> she is shy and things like that. Mm. Obviously, whatever you are saying now must be said before. Yes, it's in the scriptures. Yes, the scriptures, correct. Yeah. Correct, correct. And it's, because in, it's written because by the we word. haven't seen her in mm. person. But yes, reading correct. these things, it's making us. It's good. And the way you said the, the love of Radharani and Krishna wasn't like the human being. It was mm. different. Which is true. It was mm. different love. It's not like our, us human beings. So it's just Radharani and Krishna was, Krishna's love was completely different. Very true, very true. Thank yeah. you, Purin. And it didn't, <laughs> they, they loved each other, but, but they didn't sold anybody. They, they didn't they what? Were, uh, they didn't sold everybody. They just yeah. loving each yeah. other from inside mm. their heart. Is mm. that right? 
Um, or was it positively but, new that but, their yeah, love? You're, you're right in that they would hide their love for each other. You are right about that. Uh, because it's so deep, it's very hard to understand. But the gopis around them, the manjaris, they had yeah. some idea. They had some in inclination. In inclination, yeah. yeah. But it's very it's deep. Yeah, deep right. yeah. yeah. And yeah. Radha Smith was just gone Saturday, was it? Yeah. Yes, Radha Smith. Yeah, Saturday. Saturday, yeah. So we thought we'd uh, talk about her and try to, you know, try so, to just get some gyan. Is it today? Is the first session? Is it? Is it me or have you done? Yes, any? first session. Oh. since we come back, yeah. Yeah, because so, I, so now it, I said, yeah, I don't yeah. want to miss it. No, thank you. So hopefully now every day we'll continue now. Hopefully <laughs> from four o'clock instead yes. of three. Yes, four o'clock. Okay, thank you. Thank and you so nice much. To Bhavis. have you back. <laughs> Thank you. Hare Thank Krishna. You. Thank you so much. Huh? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna. And all the, all the Hare. devotees. Hare Krishna. So uh let's stop the recording. One second. Okay.